What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here. So the other day I was in the shower and I was kind of mindlessly looking at the tiles in the shower and I was admiring the craftsman's craftsmanship of those tiles and how perfectly they were laid out. And then I thought, well, it's a shame that in Revit, uh, when you apply a tile material, you don't really have the ability to align it properly and you cannot lay it out perfectly as workers would lay them out when they were building that uh, when they were building that bathroom and then I thought it's really a shame that you can only do that for the ceilings and then it hit me you can do it for the ceilings so I ran out of the shower Archimedes styles uh, yelling you can do it for the ceilings you can do it for the ceilings all wet and soapy from the shower and then I sat in front of my computer and tested my theory out Later, it did take some time to explain that to Mrs. Balkan Arctic, and she was not impressed with my finding, but that doesn't matter right now. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, properly align uh, different materials in Revit and a little hack or uh, a little trick that you can use in order to get your materials to align perfectly uh, either on your walls, your roofs, your ceilings, your floors, pretty much anywhere apart from a few categories, you can actually align your materials. And I thought this was amazing and it does deserve a tutorial. So that's what we're talking about today. Uh, now, if you want to learn more about uh, Revit and if you're serious about learning Revit, I do suggest you check out my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to to be the first link just below the video in the description. Uh, there I uh, place all of my uh, Revit courses. I have over a hundred hours of courses that cover uh, topics for uh, both beginners, intermediate level users, as well as advanced level users. So there is something for everyone. Uh, so if you're interested, check it out. Also, if you want my Revit project files, those are available on my Patreon page, which is the second link in the description. Finally, make sure to subscribe if you want to hear funny stories like this, followed by a Revit tutorial. <laughs> I make a couple of tutorials, or actually three tutorials each week. And also make sure to like this video, it helps promote it to other people that might want to learn about this trick. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's get started by going here to new, uh, and then I'm just going to be choosing my architecture design template. Uh, now, if you're interested in checking out uh, my templates, you can find them on my website, balkanarctic.com. That is going to be the second link in the description. Anyways, let's just click OK, and let's let Revit start right up. Okay, uh, now let's test out uh, what I was talking about, uh, the ceilings and how you can uh, uh, adjust the ceiling material properly. And I just want to demonstrate that before I show you the, well, the hack and how it can be applied to other things apart from ceilings. Uh, so uh, let's go here and open up a ceiling plan like the level one ceiling plan, just like so. And then I'm going to go here to the architecture tab to the build panel and open up the ceiling tool. Uh, now I'm going to use the sketch ceiling because we don't really have any walls and I'm going to use the uh, rectangle tool uh, to create that uh, ceiling. So let's just create a simple rectangle like this, uh, hit finish. There we go, and this is what we have. Uh, now, currently, this is a compound ceiling, the plain one, and if I change that to the 600 by 600 millimeter grid, you would see it would look like this. Uh, now, you can see that here, just because of the nature of the, of the shape, uh, here we have some panels that are kind of really small at the edges. Now, if I zoom in close here, see how we have these grid lines that kind of show us the, the grid? And if I just switch this from uh, the uh, visual style hidden line to realistic, it will show the panels and you will see that the panels are kind of following those same grid lines. So the material, which this is, this is just showing you the material, uh, shows you, well, the same thing that these grid lines are showing you. Now, if I select one of these grid lines and go perhaps to the move tool and just move it like this off to the corner, as you can see now it's kind of fixed. We are starting off with a complete panel here. If I switch this to realistic, well, it's going to follow that. It's obviously not going to be perfect because we're kind of matching a material or an image to a shape, which is 
difficult in any 3D program, uh, but it does seem to get the job done. And now if I select the ceiling and go into edit type here, we can see what's actually going on once we open up the structure of the ceiling and open up the default material of this ceiling, or sorry, not the default material, uh, but the finished material here that we have here. See how it says ceiling tile 600 by 600. If I go to edit that, it will open up the material library or the material browser. And here we can see what's going on here. So we have the appearance, which is this image that we have. And then in graphics, we have the foreground pattern, which is 600 by 600 millimeter grid. So the what we see when we're uh, here in the hidden line mode is the foreground uh, surface pattern or this grid. But when we switch to realistic here, it switches to this. Now those two are matched and you can see that here in the foreground pattern it has this alignment option and if you go to texture alignment it's going to open up a little window that's going to overlay your grid with your material. So see how you can kind of play around and try to fix that a little bit, make it exactly in the center. It's really hard to do actually but if I just click OK that's how it works. So this is how Revit manages to, if I just hit apply, okay, this is how Revit manages to allow you to play around with these ceiling tiles and adjust them uh, the way that you like. Also, uh, what's really powerful is you can go here to hidden line, you can select one of these and you can actually rotate them. And this is what that would look like. If I switch to realistic now, as you can see, even the, uh, even the image has rotated now, which is really, really important. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we can use the same approach for anything else. So let's take a look at those tiles that they've mentioned. Uh, if I go to the 3D view, like so, and let's delete this ceiling, we don't need that anymore. And let's just use a simple wall. So I'm just going to go here and use a simple interior wall, place a wall segment just like that, make it a bit smaller. There we go. Okay, so if I uh, select this and let me go into edit type and let me change the material. So let's say I want to go here into structure, go to the material and I want to add a stone material. So I can type in stone. Okay, uh, and then here uh, for the stone materials in the library, uh, I have this limestone that they like. And as you can see, it has very kind of uh, distinct uh, pattern or panels here. So if I just click or if I just select this limestone, load it into the project, just like that, hit apply, hit OK, click OK again, apply, OK, there we go. And it's just going to apply that. Now we obviously have to switch to realistic, which we cannot <laughs> because of the view template. So let's go to the properties and go to the view template. And instead of my perfect architecture design view template, let's just check that to none. Hit apply, okay, and now we can switch this to realistic. Okay, this is what we have. So if I zoom in, as you can see, we have all of these stones, but we have a problem. Let's say we want to start off with this big stone here at the bottom. How can we do that? We obviously cannot select this material and pull it down. But if we use that ceiling trick, I can select this, go into edit type, go into structure, go to that same material and in the graphics panel, go to surface patterns and add a surface foreground pattern. And here you want to switch from drafting to model. And then here you have all of these patterns. Now the one for the ceiling was the 600 by 600 millimeter grid. You don't have to use that. You can use the 200 by 200 millimeter grid, the squares. So you can just click OK on that one. Let's see, will this work? apply open okay okay and now if I switch this back to hidden line here we have those squares and if I just hit the tab key once I can select these squares and I can pull them down see you can just play around like that I can select the vertical ones and I can move them and now let's take a look at the image so if we switch to realistic as you can see the image changed a little bit so I still want to bring this down uh, so I can go back now to or perhaps, you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this 3D view here, just like that. See, I have a copy and then I'm going to just uh, unpin it and place it here 
off to the side. There we go. So it's basically showing the same thing. Now this one, I'm going to switch to hidden line and select one of these lines again using the tab key. See, and I'm just moving it down a little bit. See how it moves the material? That's so cool. So you can perfectly adjust this material by just playing around with these grid lines. You can also use the arrow keys so you can kind of perfectly adjust that. See? And now we have that stone here at the bottom. So you can actually play around with the positioning of your material. Let's try rotation. If I select this, go to rotate. There we go. So you can actually rotate the material as well. So let's say we want to start off with this style at the bottom. Again, we would use the same thing. Select one of the grids, perhaps use the arrow keys to move it around. And then we can place it just like that, or I don't know, like this, or however you want to start that. Maybe this would look nice. And there you go. That's how you can play around and customize your materials to the surface on which you're placing it. And see how it doesn't really mess up the material on the other side. So it only messes up the side where you're looking at it, which is quite cool as well. Let's take a look at it here off to the side. So at the sides, it doesn't show that, but obviously at the back it does. So if I orbit this one to the back, see how it's flat here, but again, we can select that, rotate that a little bit, and it's just going to slant the whole thing. So that's how you can uh, adjust these materials. Uh, now keep in mind, it's not going to work on everything. So it does work here for this wall. And let me just move this off to the side. If I try placing a column, perhaps, just like that, selecting that column and then adding that material here. Uh, now for the columns, the material is the kind of a uh, an instance parameter. So if I try to change it here to that stone, limestone, see if I apply that and click OK, it is going to apply that same material. Uh, but if we go here to the other one where we have it in the other view mode, see? Now if I try to hit the tab key and select one of these uh, grid lines, it's just going to move the column. It's not going to move the grid line, unfortunately, which is quite annoying because I would like to be able to attach a, a certain uh, a wood pattern, for example, for a wood column or something like that. But unfortunately, we cannot do that for columns. Uh, we can do it for other things. So strangely enough, if you create a stair, uh, just like this. And let's actually use a different stair type. Uh, let's use a home stair. So you create a stair just like this. You can actually select that stair, go into edit type, and then go to run type. And you can assign the tread material here. So if I just assign that same limestone material, Okay, 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 apply. There we go. So as you can see, we have that limestone material. Here uh, in the other view, if I just zoom into the same thing, it's still going to show those lines and I can actually select them and I can move them around. See how it's moving the limestone on that uh, step and you can just play around with that. So it is going to work. I'm just using the arrow keys to kind of move it. See how it's moving. There we go. So it, it is available on the stair treads, but it doesn't work on columns, which is uh, sad. <laughs> then obviously it's going to work on roofs, on floors, things like that, on ramps. Uh, if you create any in-place components, so if I just model in place here, uh, let's create a generic model. Okay. So here, for example, for a generic model, if you create a simple extrusion, or any other type of a generic model, you can assign that material. So here under materials, uh, you can assign that same limestone, uh, limestone material, and it's going to include that. So uh, as you can see here, it has those grids. And if you move it like this, oh, it's moving the whole thing. But perhaps if we go into edit in place, and now if we select that, see, now in edit in place, it is going to move it. See here how the whole thing is moving. There we go. So you have to be in edit in place in order to adjust this, but it can work like that. So perhaps you can create your uh, 
structural framing or your columns like this and then what you can do is you can create I don't know some uh, wood material that and then, then the grain would follow the column or something like that so it it, it is possible uh, but it does take some um, uh, some workarounds and well using uh, generic or uh, in place elements instead of uh, actual columns uh, to use well the, this technique for columns so there we go i think it's an interesting hack it's uh, quite fun uh, tell me if you have any other applications for this or any other hacks for adjusting your material i think it's quite cool and it looks really really good uh, and well, tell me what you think in the comment section below. Uh, now, if you want to check out my Revit courses, uh, take a look at my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link in the description. I have over 100 hours of content there. And also check out my Patreon, which is the second link in the description just below the video. There you can find all of my Revit project files. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. It was, uh, I personally think it was quite cool changing the, the material and, the, and uh, manipulating the material in Revit. And obviously, I'll see you with another tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.